Well, good evening and welcome once again to the Arbor Hills Nature Preserve in Plano, Texas. Tonight's exercise is the first in several field tests of the Nightcore P23i flashlight. I do want to thank Nightcore for sending me this light and making this review possible. Now, you've probably heard about the light, maybe been to the website, looked at the long list of features and have probably seen that this light is very heavily marketed to the law enforcement community. In fact, if you just looked at the list of accessories, it seems like whether your application is patrol or SWAT, uh, everything you need is right there. There's an entire ecosystem that has you covered. Now, I do have a background in private security, executive protection, I'm a volunteer for the Carrollton, Texas Police Department, as well as the Denton Police Academy. So for these first couple of field tests, I'm going to try and look at the light from a law enforcement private security perspective. In terms of the schedule of reviews, you may have read that there are two output modes, daily and tactical. At the preserve tonight, we're just going to look at daily mode. That's also the mode that is of most interest to me for my primary use case, which is wilderness search and rescue. I'll probably do a second, much shorter review, probably at a uh, sport or athletic complex, and we'll look exclusively at tactical mode. The third review I'm planning for the LBJ grasslands outside of Decatur, Texas, where I'll be using the P23i as a handheld free light in a realistic search and rescue training exercise. And since the light is uh, IP68 rated, I may, depending on interest, do a submersion and rain exposure test. In the next chapter, I'll talk briefly about selected features and some observations on the UI. If you're already familiar and comfortable with that, just go ahead and skip to the following chapter. The first thing that I look at in a light is balance and feel. I really like the balance in this light. It's well back of center, so even when I hold my hand out and move it like that, it's not going to roll or tip out of my hand when I take a nice tight grip like that, that's extremely comfortable, extremely natural. If I were forced to have to use this as a close quarters melee weapon, I could do so with complete confidence. I've in fact taken it out on the heavy bag for some light use. I say light, I don't want to risk putting a hole in the heavy bag and have to buy a new one for my uh, apartment complex. Now if you look at the profile, the first thing you might think is, well, I don't have any real roll protection. So if you're used to just setting your light on top of the hood of your patrol vehicle and having it not roll off, what I've done here is put the clip on that will completely prevent that. There's another rationale for the clip in this location is that if I'm fumbling around with the light, all I have to do is locate the clip, put my index finger at the back, and as I take a natural overhand grip, my thumb is right there on the on-off momentary switch. That's a very generous switch, easy to find. Now, you may be wondering what this is. This is old school. This is a P10. And if you look at the on-off versus this raised mode switch. One of the things I originally liked about that is that I could just roll my thumb back to adjust the mode. Unfortunately, your patrol vehicle hits a bump. Oh, you can have an accidental activation of that particular switch. What Nightcore has done in this model is they have the output level switch right here. So I can't accidentally roll and hit something thumb moves from here, very naturally to here, press in. That's your UI. There is protection against an AD. I've tested this by putting this in a knife pocket, driving all over town in my truck, absolutely no problems 
whatsoever. You do have this rubber cover over the charging port. Initially, I did not like this. The jury is still out. I tend to be partial to lights where you twist, it reveals the charging port. You put in the USB-C, you're charged, pull it out, twist back. Very simple, very easy, and it can be done in a hurry. So if you're on your one hour mark out, you're charging your light, a priority one call comes in, and you go from zero to 102 seconds uh, mentally, then it's frustrating to pull the charging cable out and then have to fumble with this. Now, one thing I have noticed in charging it a few times is that if you just pull it straight up, put the USB-C in and let it naturally take that position, then when you're through charging, you pull it out, it automatically rotates down. It's just a simple press in and you get a nice tight lock. All right, well, that's enough for me mumbling on and on. I'll talk about a few more of the features as we get out into the field. First thing I'm gonna do is the usual set of mode tests. I'll go through the daily UI in more detail. I'll also talk about the differences between daily and tactical. And then what we're gonna do tonight is go out and have a little bit of fun. We're going to simulate some calls, everything from uh, suspicious persons to criminal mischief. And then we'll use this light exactly the way we might if we were responding to those calls in reality. Well, here we are at the infamous bridge. If you've seen any of my other videos, you recognize this point. Maximum line of sight to the turn in the creek is over 35, not quite 40 yards. My headlamp is in 1000 lumen flood. So let's bring the night core in here. I have it on ultra low right now. Get the headlamp off. So we're in daily mode. Our basic cycle goes from ultra low that we're in now low mid or medium then high and that's the basic cycle we just keep clicking the uh, output level switch we cycle back through those four you have single press and hold to turbo then when you release it goes back to the mode that you were in and then access to strobe is if the light is on it's a triple press which I don't particularly like or if the light is off it is a single press all right we just got our first call in we have to go back up to the entrance to the park we have a report of a suspicious person by the play area let's go check it out okay we've already had one officer in a patrol vehicle make a sweep from the uh, front in the parking lot he didn't see anything we're coming up from the back of the play area that officer is parked well off to our left so he can observe anything uh, running away from this area so we're coming up behind no light seeing if we can see anything with the ambient lighting around no we can't so let's begin our search i've got the night core pre-staged in medium of course it has memory so it will remember anything that's in the normal daily cycle whatever mode i was in before so let's do a quick search here. Well, we got a rabbit. I've got some eye shine back there, unless that's a person laying down. Nothing there. Okay, look through, definitely got some photonic berries here. Let's click up to high.
Yeah, we're getting real good visibility in all those little dark pockets back there. Okay, well, I'm starting to think uh, this one is UTL. I wonder if it's time for uh, a break. Whoa, behind me, behind me. Okay, there's the strobe. Let me turn my headlamp on. Yeah, you can see how fast things happen. If I had that light on, do you really think I had time to triple press if strobe was a good response? Might be something you want to think of. Oh, well, guess what just came in? Next call, we have a criminal mischief complaint. A couple of kids that are throwing things at uh, hikers from the top of the observation tower. So that's our next stop. All right, here's the observation tower. I've got the night core in high. That was the mode that we left it in on the previous call. I'm looking around the periphery of the tower since we had a report of multiple kids. Thought I saw, might have seen a head bob down up there. There are two levels that need to be searched. Also thought I saw a sign of a flashlight moving way in the background. Might be them. So we're going to have to uh, move up here and search both levels of the observation area. Okay, I thought I heard something down in here. On low mode right now, you don't have to blast everything in high and turbo. I really like the hot spot and useful spill on this light. Slow mode is great for searching around in trees. Whoa, what's that? Go up to high real quick. Okay, I can hear it. Yeah, the kids are running back off this way. Got to get up there and take care of that. All right, I'm at the top of the observation tower now. Uh, we got the kids rounded up. Situation is taken care of. It's called scared straight parent pickup. Thought I heard something back down in here. We're looking down to the uh, extents of the outer loop trail in high mode. Let's bump that up to turbo. Great chance for you to see at distance how much of a wide field of view you get from the spill, yet a very useful spot. All right, our next call just came in. We got to go deeper in the preserve. Looks like we got a report of uh, people riding mountain bikes way off trail. Uh, they're yelling at people, obscenities, flashing their bike lights at them, so forth. Got to go check it out. All right, this is the area. I don't see any sign of recent bike traffic. Here, there might be sign of something going through there. That looks a little bit more like a game trail, though. That'd have to be a pretty big mountain bike. Looking off in the distance, of course, we're on high mode right now. Uh, well over a football field there out to that tree. Let me uh, bump it up to turbo. It's just as quiet as it can be. No sign of bike, no sound, no nothing. Uh, they're probably long gone by now. I'm afraid we're just gonna have to call this one UTL. All right, let's head back to the uh, parking lot. Although you never know when another scenario might crop up. So I wanted to give you one example of ultra low and here I'm using the night core as a substitute headlamp. So I'm just trying to make my way across the path. And uh, this is certainly enough illumination to get that job done. All right, in this scenario, I'm an FTO training a rookie. We just came around the corner. There were three men, I'd say late teens or probably early 20s, right in that corner over there. I'm on high mode right now. Uh, we yelled at them. One of them looked like they threw something over into the creek area, and then two of them froze here. One of them took off running. 
I'm gonna let the rookie chase him, and then I'm gonna go handle these two. All right, I've dropped down into uh, low mode, and for this scenario, it uh, looks like we hit the trifecta. We had a dealer and two buyers. You can smell it in the air, it was weed. The dealer looks like he got rid of the weed, but we found several dubs of H on him, so he's going down. One of the buyers here has outstanding warrants, and the rook caught up with the runner in the parking lot, and uh, he has several large bags of weed on him. So uh, they're all going down. So let's say that we uh, got our back up in. These two are taken care of. I'm going to do a quick search for what was discarded. Okay, don't see anything directly. Uh, let's just take a look at the light itself. Looking out here, go up once into medium. Then high, we're looking at, uh, you know, 60 yards out to the absolute limit of line of sight in that uh, tree, far tree line. And then uh, let me do a sustain 360 in turbo. Well, I'm gonna head on back to the truck. Of course, I don't chase anything. That's why we have young whippersnappers and dogs. And we have rookies to handle paperwork. So that means uh, while they're taking care of all of the hard stuff, I'm gonna go back to the uh, truck and do a quick summary. All right, we're back at the truck, end of shift. I hope you had as much fun watching that as I did making it. I actually want to thank the Plano, Texas Police Department for two things. Number one, making uh, Plano one of the safest cities in Texas to live. I come out here to the nature preserve all the time with hardly a care about safety because of the excellent work they do. And a Plano police officer actually consulted on the making of this video. I was very lucky to uh, have a quick chat with an officer who was uh, in the parking lot. I think he was working on a report. He was nice enough to talk to me and he actually told me about several of the calls they've had. So that uh, call to deal with uh, bikers off trail, that happens more frequently than you might realize. That was straight from him. Now, as far as the light, I tend to believe that if you put a light out under realistic circumstances, it has a tendency to either sell itself or, is, or it doesn't. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed, especially with the medium and high modes. I really believe that for the role in which I use a free light in wilderness search and rescue, those medium and high modes are going to be absolutely perfect. Now, the one thing I have not addressed is heat. The light does get hot, but really only from here down. So a lot of it depends on your grip. If your natural grip is such that your small finger is comfortably away from this area, you're in good shape. It's even easier for underhand. That's one another reason why I have the clip there is that it keeps my thumb from slipping onto a potentially hot area. Yeah, you hold it on a turbo after about a minute, you're probably gonna be forced to let go. Depends, of course, on the environment. It is a pretty crisp, cool uh, night tonight, but, but yeah, it's going to get hot to the point that you would not be able to touch it, but only in that area. Now, if you have really, really large hands, then yeah, you might feel the burn. So that's something to, uh, to take into consideration. So tonight you saw daily mode. Next review will be tactical. And for all my friends in law enforcement, I wanna thank you for your service. Stay safe. And as always, until the next review, 
Thank you very much for your time and thank you for watching the video.